So photosynthesis is quite a complicated process that involves a number of different areas within the cell. So here I've got a stylized version of a plant cell. Uh, so here is uh, the plasma membrane uh, and there's a cellulose cell wall outside it. Uh, the structure in yellow is the chloroplast, which is a double membrane structure. Um, so there's an inner and an outer membrane. And then within inside the chloroplast, there's these structures called thylakoids, which are membrane-bound structures. So inside uh, the thylakoid, we have the thylakoid lumen. And in order to make sugars, we need to involve uh, three different locations. We need the cytosol, we need the stroma, and we need the thylakoids themselves. So how do we start? Well, if we start off uh, with thinking about light, uh, and the way that the light comes in is light uh, powers an electron transport chain. So there's another video uh, available uh, that shows you exactly how the electron transport chain. So I'm not going to go into the details here. But light hits the chlorophyll molecules um, uh, that powers an electron transport chain. And as a result of that electron transport chain, we split water. So we take water uh, to give us half an oxygen and two protons. And the electrons go into the electron transport chain. At the end of it, those electrons are given to a molecule called NADPH, um, which is made on the stromal side of the membrane. In addition to moving the electrons from the water to the NADPH, the electron transport chain also has the net effect of pushing protons from the stroma into the lumen. So we move the protons, so we end up with a high proton concentration uh, inside the thylakoid uh, lumen. And that proton gradient is able to then power the F-type ATPA. So this is the same enzyme that you met in the mitochondria lectures. There's also those inside the chloroplast. So uh, with the movement of protons, it's able to synthesize the production of ATP from a DP plus phosphate. So uh, there's two stages uh, to this light-dependent uh, reaction. So we've got light, uh, hit stimulates an electron transport chain, that means the electrons move from the water eventually through to the NADPH. The electron transport chain also moves protons across the membrane, and those protons then go back through the F-type ATPAs to make ATP. So as a result of those two different processes, we've now got NADPH and ATP available in the stroma, and they're needed for the Calvin cycle. So substrate for the Calvin cycle uh, is CO2, so we've got inorganic carbon going in. Um, and in order to do the Calvin cycle, we need to use up that NADPH. So the NADPH is converted back uh, in, into NADP+. Uh, so there's a sort of cycle that goes on uh, between the electron transport chain and the Calvin cycle with relation to NADPH. And there's also a cycle that goes on with ATP. So the ATP is used up in the Calvin cycle uh, to then regenerate ADP. So there's this continuous cycling of these carrier uh, molecules uh, between the uh, membrane and the stroma. As a result of that in the Calvin cycle, we take this inorganic carbon and we make triose phosphates. So those are three carbons and one phosphate, and they're reduced uh, forms of carbohydrate, i.e. they're high energy molecules. There's lots of different things that can happen to those triose phosphates. So some of them stay uh, within the chloroplast to make starch, for example. But in order to make um, soluble sugars, what happens is actually those triose phosphates leave the uh, chloroplast and go into the cytosol. At that point, they can then uh, be respired, so they can be used to power uh, the cell that way. Or they can be converted into hexose phosphates. Uh, which is six carbons and one phosphate. And then two of those can combine, uh, we lose uh, the phosphate, uh, in order to make uh, sucrose, which is uh, fructose plus glucose. So overall, we've got lots of different things happening in lots of different stages. So just to walk you through it, so we've got light hits the electron transport chain. That electron transport chain takes electrons from water and eventually gives them to NADPH. The electron transport chain also results in protons moving across the membrane, so we get a high proton concentration inside the thylakoid lumen, which is used to power an F-type ATPase and make ATP. The NADPH and the ATP is used to power the Calvin cycle, so we take inorganic carbon to make triose phosphates, and then those triose phosphates, in order to make sugar, are exported into the cytosol, and then they go via a hexose phosphate to finally make our sugar. So if we think about uh, the sort of equation for photosynthesis, light 
uh, is there, water is there, oxygen is there, CO2 is there, and the sugar is actually in the cytosol. So, um, as I say, there's another video explaining exactly how the electron transport chain works, um, but hopefully that gives you an overview of the major processes in photosynthesis.